Hey everyone, it's Robert and you're watching Sidestep Adventures. I'm out here with Walt and Cody and today we just came across a cemetery that actually, uh, Walt, you've been to before. Um, so we're going to have a look at it. Don't know much about it. There's probably a church or something here, I would imagine, unless it's just a little family cemetery, but I see different last names. Definitely a church was here on the other side. Oh really? Because there's a road that cuts through the woods. It's like a hundred years old. And it's completely overgrown now. Yeah. It goes as far as the eye can see that well now there's a house there which wasn't there last time we were here. Which was how long ago? Twenty five years, twenty years. Yeah. Something like that. Probably longer than that, probably about twenty five. Um anyway. Yeah, as you can see we're out in the middle of the uh the country here in Georgia and uh it's definitely there's definitely growing up all around out here. There's definitely people moving out. There was evidence of it. I believe there was evidence that we saw of two churches over here. Actually, there was evidence here of one church and then across the way on that old road that is completely overgrown on the embankment over there. Seems to me there was another church. I um, have all this on a kin tape. Was it a... Uh... Was it just foundation or any building? Oh yeah, it was no building. Definitely a foundation, a long foundation like of a church. That's cool. Let's take a look at some of these graves over here. It looks like someone's keeping this cemetery at least cut, which is good. Love these old wrought iron fences. There's no gate to access this one. I'll step over. Knock some of the leaves off. It says, in memory of And this is going to be one of those times I can't read it. It looks like Arthur. And then I see C. It's unfortunate I can't read this. It says, uh, I think that's Arthur. I could be wrong about that. And then that looks like uh, I'm going to fail you guys on reading that one today. But it's obviously a child's grave. These are some uh, Civil War graves, Confederate soldiers here. This looks like there should be a gate right here so you can get inside, but I don't see one. I guess, we'll, uh, I guess we're not going to step over this one. It's a little bit taller, so I have to really climb on it. And I can't read it from here. Let me step over somewhere, see if there's a place where I can make it over this. It's weird there wouldn't be a gate. Oh, there's a gate. There is a gate, guys. I didn't see it. This is the Phillips here, and it's definitely an old gate. Let me pull that out. I'll make sure we put that back where it was. So this is Confederate grave, first lieutenant, James T. P. H. I. L. L. Phillips, James T. Phillips, Company K, 9th Georgia Militia, Confederate States of America. Then over here, we've got Rachel Calhoun, wife of J-A-S-T Phillips. What was his first name? James, yeah. James T. Phillips. March 29th, 1828 to January 5th, 1908. What's interesting is that uh, it looked like a Confederate tombstone. I see, look at them. In the same kind of tombstone, but uh, that one's just a civilian headstone. And then over here we've got a bunch of unmarked graves.
It looks like uh may have been the road bed right there behind that new house that Walter was telling us about a minute ago. See if I can can do it one handed. There we go. All right, this is pretty interesting double headstones here. This is Ella Calhoun, born August 18th, 1860, died September 11th, 1861. Well, so that was a child's grave. Both of these are children's graves. Here's uh, Hattie Calhoun, born September 6th, 1866, died November 11th, 1867. And, and footstones for both of the burials. I've often said it was hard to be a child back then. Children's graves are very sad. All right, I'm gonna turn the camera off while I crawl back over this. So Walt's filming over there, and we're over here in the uh, larger part of the cemetery. So we've got a row of children's graves right here that we'll take a look at. This is John M., son of R.M. and M.H. Patterson. September 23rd, 18... Oh, wow, this is a very old grave, 1841 to May 26th, 1853. These are actually some of the uh, oldest graves I've found in a while. This is Duncan, Duncan C., son of R.M. and M.A. Patterson. May 2nd, 1854, 1854 to October 4th, 1855. And over here, this one. It says, infant daughter of Robert. Let me clear that off a little bit more. Robert M. and it's M. A. R. Margaret A. Patterson. So they lost three children. It's always sad to see. And here's Robert M. Patterson. Robert Mossman Patterson, born in. Jefferson County, Georgia, October 4th, 1820, died in Talbot County, Georgia, December 5th, 1866. And there's his grave right there. It says, our father and mother. Look at this big old grasshopper. Right, we've got Margaret A. Patterson, nay, C-O-L-Y-U-H-O-U-N, Calhoun, different spelling maybe, born near Wilmington, North Carolina, February 26, 1823, died in Talbot County, Georgia, December 22, 1905.
All right, so over here we've got more Pattersons and a younger generation of Pattersons. So it's kind of interesting to see that the family's kept burying in this plot here. Um, it's Annie M. Patterson, born December 10th, 1892, died March 26th, 1975. And John William, born 1896, died 1978. And Lena Hagerman, born 1891, died 1964. There's another Robert Patterson that died in 1968. So these are uh, mother and father Patterson. And I wonder if they are, uh, they're probably the kids, the, the living children, or well, the children that survived infanthood, I should say, of Margaret and Robert. It's what I would imagine. Don't know that for sure. Uh, it's William Calvin, September 10th, 1862 to November 29th, 1940. It says father. And over here is... What does that say? Jenny... Bassett, September 29th, 1865 to November 11th, 1942. And down there it says mother. So that was uh, William Calvin Patterson. All right, and we've got some more graves out here. We'll take a look at it real quick. Here's Robert Ashley Randall, infant. May 16th, 1926. This is sacred to the memory of Sarah, wife of Duncan Calhoun. Um, unfortunately, I can't read the rest of that one. I'm pretty sure that's a born in, or maybe not. I see May, but I'm not going to be able to make out the rest of that one. I would guess to make probably 1800s. From the shape of it and the wording. It looks like 83. This is sacred to the memory of Duncan Calhoun, born December 18th, 1796, died November 17th, 1851, aged 51 years, three months it looks like. And then it's got some writing on the bottom that I'm not going to try to make out. Here's Archibald Calhoun Sr. Departed this life September 15th, 1839. Wow, these are some of the oldest graves that I've come across in a while out here. Usually the graves I come across are post-Civil War. This is Richard Calhoun, May 31st, 1841 to June 29th, 1862. There's another kind of interesting burial right here. That we'll take a look at. It's Moore, and it's uh, last name Moore, and uh, both of these are newer burials, and you can see the stone has been damaged there. Um, I wouldn't even try to fix that; it'd probably just fall over. But there's William. Laurel Moore, born May 29th, 1902, died April 13th, 1971. And here's another Patterson, his wife, more than likely, Julia Patterson, born November 21st, 1904, died January 24th, 1984. I don't want to go too far out of the cemetery since there's a new house back there, but, uh, I just wanted to kind of show you guys, this looks like the old road bed that Walter was telling us about a minute ago. If I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but there's the edge right there, an edge right there on the cemetery. Maybe you can see it a little bit better going up that way. You can see both sides. And then down in there you can kind of see the impression where there used to be a road.
All right, so you were saying after we stopped filming a minute ago that you do think that yeah, that's the roadway. Yeah, right, exactly. That that's the roadbed, because actually standing right here, I can see it clear going right up through the woods there. It dips down from this embankment that we're standing on. The land here is a little higher, and it, it dips right down, and there's clearly the roadbed. And this is what we saw years ago when we were here. The one thing I don't see anymore is the other side of the road and the embankment because it does look like maybe the land has been leveled since we were here and then grown up again because there was an embankment on that side, a rise of the land, and we saw evidence back then of what we believed was a church. The church for this place, one of the churches for this place. That's cool. Where was the other one at? I think that it was right here. I mean, the, the evidence of it is no longer clearly visible, but when we were here before, we could walk around here and say, oh yeah, this is where the apparent church had stood. Right. Obviously a cemetery with a church. But um, I no longer see that clear evidence. But again, it's been more, more than 20 years. Yeah. It's amazing how much uh, history can be lost, you know, from that long ago to yeah. now, especially with new development, like that house yeah, over that there. Yeah, that house was not here. There was nothing here. It was just overgrowth. Yeah. Was the cemetery in the kind of condition it is now, back then, like yeah, cleaned up? Yeah, the cemetery doesn't look any different. Uh, it had all of this, even the fencing has not changed. It appears to be modern fence around an old cemetery, and an old fencing around an old cemetery. And this is how it was then. That's cool. The one thing is uh, somebody's apparently been tampering with headstones because this moor headstone has been turned sideways. Yeah, I saw that. If you notice, the, the bottom's leaning in, so maybe it was about to fall and oh, someone yeah, stood it back up. trying to prevent it from actually falling over. I got yeah. yeah. That's what I thought, because at first I thought it had been tampered with, too. Yeah. That makes good sense. I saw some bottles over here I wanted to look at. They're probably just new beer bottles, but I thought we'd take a look at them just in case. Yeah, that's, that's all they are. Just old Schlitz bottles. Look at that rock laid up against the tree. Either the, the tree grew up and pushed it up, which I don't think that's the case. I think someone laid that there long ago. It's really interesting. You can see that road. I don't know if you can see it on video, but you can see it again right there. And that's just so cool. I love old roads. And it just it speaks to how a, uh, a place has come and gone and changed throughout the years. So I actually heard about this cemetery quite a bit growing up, and uh, Walt's going to tell you a story that I heard <laughs> quite a bit as a kid um, growing up out here. But I, this is actually my first time out here. I think it's pretty cool. And let me turn the camera over to Walt and let him tell the story. Well, there's my Uncle Ken, who came from another planet, apparently. And uh, we were out here just traipsing around. We came across the cemetery, and Ken, we were in Ken's truck or van, depending on what he had that week. And uh, we we're out here roaming around little George, Brian, and I, and Denise, my youngest sister, was here as well. And uh, we came across the obelisk tombstone over here. This says somebody Moss Mossman. I don't remember the full name. I haven't read it today. But Ken read it, and all Ken read was Mossman. The Mossman is going to get us. And then for the rest of the afternoon, there was the Mossman roaming through the woods after everybody. And so that was a, uh, that was a monster in Ken's mind. As hu as humor, he didn't actually believe it. He was just he was just latched onto that name Mossman, that he was the Moss Man. And that's so funny because growing up, that's that's what I heard was this is the Moss Man Cemetery, you know, <laughs> not as someone's well, that's where, name. That's where the Moss Man lives, right? <laughs> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the cemetery with us today and hearing that story. We're going to go find somewhere else to explore, but we will see you on the next adventure.